Hello there again. Today we're going to look at how control coordination takes place in plants. Plants, unlike animals, respond to a different kind of a stimuli. Their control and coordination is based on the concept of movement. Plants, unlike animals, are stuck or rooted firmly to the ground and cannot move. Plants of course have to manufacture food for survival by a process called photosynthesis, which along with control and coordination helps in the response of plants that results in growth. Just like humans who have hormones secreted from their glands for a specific need. Plants to have hormones within their body that help to react and respond to a particular stimuli. Let's have a look at the various stages or steps that we will be covering. First of all, we'll have a look at what photosynthesis is and what elements are involved. We'll have a look at control and coordination within a plant in response to a stimulus, the types of hormones and what we mean by dormancy and the breaking of dormancy, and finally the different functions of the different types of hormones. Photosynthesis as can be described is just the process by which plants manufacture their food in the presence of elements such as sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. This food which is stored by the plants helps in the control and coordination which is basically the movement of the plant with the help of hormones. The movement of a plant is based on the whole body of the plant changing its position or direction based on the nature of the stimuli. Unlike animals, they cannot move single body parts. Control and coordination, if you look at it, when it's carried out, these actions will always be based upon a certain reaction. Plants can change their behavior and against an environmental change as we have stated, hormones that help in doing this. As a result, plants only use hormones for coordination and do so by responding to the stimulus by growing. What do we mean by the dormancy and breaking of dormancy? When a plant is in its seed stage, it is said to be sleeping or dormant. Just like a volcano will be asleep for 10-12 years before it becomes active and then erupts. Similarly, as the seed is in this dormant stage, it will be requiring warmth, moisture, air and hormones. Then it begins to develop. As it develops slowly from the seed, it grows into a seedling which further matures and grows into a plant. This process now is referred to as the breaking of dormancy, where the seed turns into a seedling and the seedling into a plant and the plant as a result more likely would grow into a tree. This was due to the presence of elements that helped it, not to mention the hormones also. So the sprouting of the seed, which is basically the radical and the root and the plumule, which is the shoot, were all brought about by these hormones, which are of different types. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what phytohormones are. Phyto in Greek terminology means light and as it is we stated for photosynthesis to take place plants require 
sunlight as it is for growing since sunlight is the stimulus the plants have the tendency to respond to the light and grow towards it as a result the hormones present carry out this control and coordination within the plant they control the activity of growth in the plant by coordinating it and directing it towards sunlight apart from growth other activities like stomata control formation of flowers fruit growth ripening of fruits falling of leaves are all controlled by the action of plant hormones there are basically four types of plant hormones or phytohormones if you want to call it that you have the auxins the gibberellins the cytokinins and the abscisic acid let's have a look at these briefly before we go into more detail the auxins these help in cell enlargement and cell differentiation the gibberellins they help in the breaking of dormancy when a seed is asleep the cytokinins they help in promoting cell division when the plant is growing and of course we have the abscisic acid or the aba that is basically the growth inhibitor as it's termed which when the plant is in its growing stage helps it to grow further auxins as we stated promote cell enlargement and cell differentiation they promote fruit growth also they control the amount of light and gravity towards which a plant responds this simply means that plants are phototrophic meaning the shoot will respond towards light and grow towards it and the roots are geotropic because they will grow downwards due to gravitational pull auxins are generally produced on the tips of stems and roots and they are used also synthetically in agriculture and horticulture gibberellins these like auxins also promote cell enlargement and cell differentiation they are responsible in the breaking of dormancy in seeds and buds they promote full growth and also help in the elongation of shoots so if a seed did not have gibberellins hormone then its breaking of its dormancy would not be able to take place the cytokinins these help in cell development so that the cells can enlarge and grow as a result helping the plant to grow at the same time they also delay the aging in leaves the breaking of dormancy in seeds and buds they promote fruit growth and also help in the opening of the stomata the abscisic acid aba are growth inhibitors apart from or unlike sorry breaking of dormancy ada hormones help in the dormancy of seeds and buds so it is like saying apart from a seed breaking out and developing into a seedling and into a plant the abscisic acid in the seed helps it to sleep or to keep it dormant similarly they help in the closing of stomata and they help in the promotion of wilting and falling of leaves it also causes the detachment of flowers and fruits so when you see flowers and fruits and leaves lying around a plant or a tree you know that this is all due to the abscisic acid i hope you've enjoyed the presentations If you'd like to see more presentations you can always visit us on our website at www.arrangeacademy.com Furthermore for a subscription you could always check us out on Facebook 
at www.facebook.com slash Academy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Academy. Thank you.